So today you guys are about to get into the Hudson River, which is right here in our backyard. And the Hudson River, as you can see here is our map, is 315 miles long from start to finish. The Hudson River begins way up in the Adirondack Mountains of New York State, where Mount Marcy is located, which is the tallest peak in the Adirondack Mountains. In Lake Tier of the Clouds, we have fresh water. And when you travel 315 miles later, the Hudson River empties way down into the Atlantic Ocean, where we find our saltwater source. In the Atlantic Ocean, throughout the day, the tides affect the ocean. So every six hours, the tide rises, and then six hours later, it falls. So we have high tide and low tide. And the tidal changes causes the salt water from the ocean to enter into the Hudson River while mixing with the freshwater runoff and our northern sources together and make brackish water. So here in Yonkers is brackish, the water is brackish, and you're going to be staining in brackish water. The interns right now are getting ready to bring all our fishing gear down to the river to set up for our program. The cart has the stain net rolled on it. It has a scavenger hunt, clipboards for the students. It has the buckets and a few dip nets that we keep handy while we're down on the beach. Once we get down to the beach, the net's going to be unrolled and laid out onto the beach. The buckets are going to get filled with water. The clipboards will be placed out so that the kids can easily grab them. Then we'll head over to the closet where we'll get all of the waders appropriate for the students so that we can show them how to put their waders on properly. So they're coming in with the cart. Cart's ready and the net's going to come off and head to the beach to get unrolled. And the buckets, two square buckets and one round bucket. We also have our scavenger hunt clipboards. This keeps the kids busy while waiting their turn. We also need our green dip net, which helps us to easily grab small crabs and other animals. Our interns right now are heading to our storage closet where we keep our waders. The door is always left locked for security purposes. They get the key and they grab the waders appropriate for the students for that class. And then the educator or interns show the students how to put them on correctly over their clothes. So the proper way to put the waders on, you must have socks on, it's more comfortable. So I'm just going to put my socks on. Waders requires you to take your shoes off and keep your socks on. And then the waders have the name Cabela's in the front or a pocket it's located in the front. That's how you know the front from the back. Make sure your boots are facing the right direction. Right. Facing forward as if you would be putting on your pair of pants. Then you do one leg at a time. Your foot goes all the way into the boot. Flat, like that. Put your other leg in. And wiggle it all the way down. Now your feet are flat in the boots, you can stand up. And then slide it on over your clothes. Like that. Up and over. Your straps go over your shoulders. Arms go through. Clipped and ready to go. All right, so we're gonna unroll the net. Walk backwards as the net unrolls. I'll show you that the top of the net, just hold it this way, the top of the net has the floats and the bottom of the net has these weights. Scrape the bottom as we pull it so all the animals from the bottom get caught into the net. So we have these two buckets. These two square buckets we put the fish in and the round bucket is the bucket the kids use to get their hands wet. So we're just going to fill these up with river water. Actually, grab. Right about here. Right about this level. That's good. And move them right here. Perfect. 
And we just keep this green net handy because this is an easier way to be able to scoop up the fish than to show them. This area over here is our tidal marsh. Right now the tide's a little bit higher, but we do not want any of the kids walking along the edges of these rocks here. So we're walking into the river. These waders do keep your clothes dry. And the idea is that you do not go beyond the height of your waders. So generally, we walk in about to your waist. You'll start to feel the water tighten up around your legs because it's squeezing all of the air out of your waders up at the top. So it does have a little bit of a tight feeling when you're in the water. And we recommend that you do not do this. <laughs> do not dunk. So as we enter the river, we're gonna side step in, two hands on the pole, standing shoulder to shoulder next to the child slowly entering into the river. You'll feel the rocks and then it'll start to get a little bit muddy. Once the kids are in and they're into position and it's time to stop, you're gonna put the bottom of the net and slide their hands up and have them stand upright, no dunking. They can touch the water if they wanna feel it, but we encourage them to stand still at this point so that they have their good footing and they can start to head back to the beach dragging in. At this time, rotate around them so they're on your right side and you're guiding them out of the water. You're always leading them in and leading them out. So always have them to your right side so they safely get in and out. At that point, you're dragging the net to the beach. Kids can let go once they're close enough and you can continue to drag the net out, turning it horizontally so that you can scoop the fish in a basket formation and fully be out of the water. As you exit the water, bring the net out and lay it flat on the beach. Keep all kids on the further side away from the water and just leave you and the other interns on that side of the net to access everything. Check the net and you can hand kids fish if their hands are wet and ready to take them to the bucket. They can be waiting patiently for you to hand them the fish. They don't want to hold it. They can just use one finger and touch the fish from head to tail. You can place a fish or a crab into their hands as they can carry it safely to the buckets. And under the rocks near our marsh, we have a fiddler crab. This is a male fiddler crab. It has the larger front claw here, which is used to wave on the female for mating. They come out at low tide. You'll see them in the mud scurrying <laughs> around. So that's a male fiddler. We have a lot of things that we look for here on the beach at Bezac, And one of the things that guides the kids is our scavenger hunt. So there's several items on this sheet that they'll be looking for. Driftwood, shells, the palisades, water chestnuts, bricks, sea glass, the George Washington Bridge, bones, the high tide lines, crab parts, boats, pieces of garbage, feathers, rocks, and geese. What we're going to go over is our basic catch of the day seining and we're going to discuss right now what we caught while we were outside in the river. So each time we have a group outside, they're going to keep track of our findings using this catch of the day tally sheet, as you see here. So some of the animals that we might be catching, I have up here on this table here. And one of our first animals here that we catch is a white perch. So this animal here doesn't get much, it gets a little bit bigger than what we have. Maybe I'll actually hold it up for you. This here is our white perch, right here, our white perch. So our first catch, we'll add white perch to the board, and our tally is five, so five white perch. Our next catch is a mummy chug, mummy chug. And a mummy chug is pretty common in the Hudson River. They live in the brackish water and they don't get much bigger than the size that they're at right now. We usually catch them in more than one. We'll catch several of them in the net. And they're very closely related to our banded killifish here. Our banded killifish are brackish water. Usually the mummy chugs and the banded killifish we find in our tidal marsh outside and, it, and very often common in our seine net. Here we'll add banded killi and we caught three in our mummy chug we caught four. Another common fish is the striped bass. Striped bass is related to the white perch that we have that I showed you first. Striped bass has about seven to eight stripes that run from head to tail. 
They get to be about three, four feet long, and we commonly catch them at around this size and a little bit bigger. And we only caught one of those today. And also, the striped bass have two dorsal fins. The first one is usually a spiny dorsal, followed by the second soft dorsal fin. So this right here is an adult striped bass. It can get to be about three to four feet long versus how big we've caught them. Then we have our blue crab, blue claw crab. This one here is um, a little feisty right now. You can actually see the hind legs, which are flat like paddles, and they use those for swimming. They have the rest of their legs for walking and their front two claws. Very fast swimming crab, as you can see. And the front claws have red tips for catching their food. Let me see if I can just scoop them. This one actually is a female. It has a triangle. There's a little shape that indicates it's a female. It comes to a point like a rocket ship if it's a male. So this one's a female. We caught a lot of blue crabs, which is usually very common. We caught about 15 blue crabs. So overall, our catch for the day was five white perch, three banded killifish, four mummy chugs, one striped bass, and 15 blue crabs. So catch of the day seining is something that we do here at BZAC pretty frequently. We're well known for our seining programs. We usually schedule these during the lowest accessible tide so that we have more beach space available to pull the net in and out of the water and ensure that we're scraping the mud from the bottom and the animals are swimming into the net. We offer these free on the weekends for families and children of all ages. We also offer it for schools that can book field trips with your class, all ages, from pre-K all the way up to seniors in high school and even college are welcome to come and participate in our Catch of the Day seating programs. And we also offer this as part of scout badge requirements for both girls and boys, as well as our ever popular Hudson River seating birthday party where you can celebrate your birthday in the Hudson River.